First up is a new trader trick that works for Patch 7 Hotfix 28. Larian thought they fixed the Pack to the Blade Warlock Pact Weapon trader trick, but really all they did was stop us from using the Wares method. You can still get your Pact Weapon into the barter menu by simply putting another weapon in there first, then dragging that weapon onto your currently equipped Pact Weapon, and like that, the Pact Weapon will be placed into the barter menu, swapping places. And like the old method, you can just click Barter and Balance over and over to take the value of your weapon from the trader without ever losing your gold. And on console, you can probably just try to equip the weapon in the barter menu, and that should swap the Pact Blade into barter for you. And really, the best part about this trick is that you can change your class and still keep the Pact Weapon. As you can see, I changed my class to Paladin, but the Pact Weapon condition is still applied to my weapon. This means that you now have a permanent method to steal Trader's Goods as you progress through your playthrough. Not only that, though, because a Pact Weapon is actually an incredible bonus in itself. Not only being able to not be disarmed, or drop your weapon. It also uses your charisma modifier instead of strength or dexterity, which can be an excellent bonus to carry onto whatever class you change into next. So out of all the trader tricks, this may be not only one of the most convenient, but could also be one of the best for certain builds. And next up is hidden Shadowheart dialogue 100% of players missed. If you have Shadowheart in your party and head to the graveyard in Act 3, you can click on a tombstone near the south entrance and Shadowheart will say, odd, I I can't help but feel a twinge of sorrow at this grave. But why? Who is this? She'll then have an exclamation mark over her head where you can then talk to her and discover that Alistair Marnley, the man whose grave triggered this dialogue, had actually trained Shadowheart in the arts of stealing, following people, and other Sharon arts. And like a true Sharon, he took his secrets to the grave. But what most people probably didn't know is that if you have Shadowheart drop a Night Orchid on top of Alistair Marnley's grave, she'll actually have something additional to say. She says, my favorite flower, just a small remembrance from one who can scarcely remember. Rest well. And next up is a hidden interaction with a pair of super secret gloves. These gloves are the sparkle hands. On a hit with an unarmed attack, the wearer gains two lightning charges and, while imbued with lightning charges, attacks against metal constructs and foes wearing armor gain advantage. However, what might not seem obvious is that this also applies to throwing attacks, making these gloves actually incredible for a tavern brawler thrower. The lightning charges are great for increasing your chance to hit, dealing more damage, and gaining advantage on your throws are all incredible. Best of all, you can get these gloves super early on in Act 1. All you need to do is head to the Sunlit Wetlands, or the Putrid Bog, depending on if you dispel the illusion, then head all the way to the south until you reach the Decrepit Sanctuary. Once there, you can find these gloves within a wooden chest at the base of the giant tree stump. Be careful though, you'll need to fight off some wood woads, which can heal themselves, and ancient mud mephits, which will actually summon mud mephits that explode, dealing force damage upon death in an AoE. This can be difficult for a lower level party, especially on honor mode. My recommendation against those mud mephits, which explode upon death, is to toggle on non-lethal attacks to prevent the mud mephits from actually dying and dealing their area of effect splash damage against your party. And next up is a hidden interaction with ephemeral whispers. This condition is granted by wearing a whispering mask while Auntie Ethel is still alive. Each turn, you must succeed a wisdom saving throw to prevent being charmed by Auntie Ethel. However, if you cast protection from evil and good on your character, then even if you fail the saving throw against ephemeral whispers, you won't become charmed. And by wearing the mask, you can actually walk directly through the poison gas clouds and traps leading to Auntie Ethel. You only need one character to lead the way with the mask in order to clear the way and make it safe for everyone else. So if you've ever wondered what's the best way to get through this area or how are we intended to go through this area, I think the Whispering Mask is probably one of the intended ways to bypass all the traps in that descent. Not only that, but the Whispering Mask also allows you to see through gnarled doors. Now the first one is obvious, you have to go through it, but there is actually a second gnarled door that can be found within the trapped descent. This gnarled door can be found by taking the ladder down and then jumping up towards the door. Now inside there, you can actually find a mushroom mushroom circle that leads you to none other than the Underdark. And next up is a hidden weapon everyone missed. This weapon, like Falara Louvre, is stuck and you'll need to pass a dialogue check in order to retrieve it. Unlike Falara Louvre, this weapon is stuck in a chunk of meat and not stone. This weapon is located just north of the Blighted Village near the Bugbear and the Ogre Barn. Once you click on the weapon, you'll see a cinematic and will have a number of dialogue options, investigation, strength, or sleight of hand. Once you pass the dialogue check, you'll have a 
a brand new weapon, a dagger plus one. Now, not nearly as powerful nor as exciting as Farlar Luve. It's still surprising that it got its own cinematic and a skill check in order to retrieve it. And next up is a rare cinematic that 99% of players missed. This cinematic only appears during an honor mode playthrough or where legendary actions are enabled. That's because this legendary action in particular when used on a specific target causes this cinematic and that legendary action is called the Absolute's Will and is cast by Priestess God. The spell is a bonus action which uses telekinesis to pull targets closer. However, Priestess God can use this ability on the unstable statues within the Shattered Sanctum to literally pull the statue onto your character, dealing bludgeoning damage and knocking you prone. I was so surprised when I saw this cinematic because it's very rare to have a cinematic happen mid-combat with the end of the Auntie Ethel fight as another example, but this is extremely cool to see after over 1,000 hours and having only just seen it now. And next up is a secret weapon that you can get as a quest reward that 99% of players missed. In Act 1, when you first encounter the Grove, Arca's brother Cannon dies in the opening cinematic. After the battle is resolved, you can find Arca preparing to execute Saza, the captive goblin. By preventing Arca from killing Saza, you can then escort Saza out of the Grove and back to Minthara. Upon doing so, you'll complete the quest called Save the Goblin Saza and be rewarded with the Assassin's Touch, an uncommon dagger which deals an additional 1d4 necrotic damage to creatures that are knocked out or sleeping. This can be useful immediately as there are a number of sleeping goblins and bungwares right outside the Shattered Sanctum, and since most players probably don't help Saza escape as seen by the 2.5% of players who earned the achievement for rescuing Saza, that means that the majority of players probably never saw this dagger. And next up is a secret quest reward from Timber. Timber is a squirrel you can find in the Emerald Grove at the top of the elevator. By having Speak With Animals on, you can have a conversation with Timber and come to an agreement that as long as you keep your feet on the ground and stay off the trees, you may share Timber's territory. And as an added bonus, Timber will actually give you a trinket, which is none other than a hyena ear, which is far from useless. You can use it to craft a potion of speed using three of them. You can find many more of these throughout the game, making this small, simple reward actually helpful. And since Timber is such a small creature and you'd need to have speak with animals, and since Timber starts dialogue with biting you, it's certainly a hidden reward that most players probably miss. And next up is a hidden rat that when spoken to will actually lead you to an evil thing. This rat is running around near Damon in the grove and if you have speak with animals on you'll be able to talk with it and discern that the rat tried to bite an evil thing and hurt its tooth in the process. Once you progress through dialogue the rat will lead you to this evil thing however it is locked behind a door. If you smash through you'll enter into dialogue with Pandirna who is paralyzed. You can learn from talking to her that Auntie Ethel sold her a potion that paralyzed her from the waist down. Now unfortunately the rat is pointing directly at the chest that Pandirna is sitting behind. Even if you move the chest the rat will actually follow it around and for some reason you cannot open it unless you first just steal it into your inventory or maybe even unless you slay Pandirna. Now once it's opened you'll find a key to the alchemist's cabinet. Inside you'll find a number of random potions and drow poison. And while the treasure that the rat led you to might not be a lot, it's certainly something that most players probably miss. And next up is a hidden interaction with the hag's victims. Efren is one of Auntie Ethel's victims and is petrified within the entrance gallery of her lair. If you use basilisk oil on him, you will free him. However, he will die shortly after because he claims to be sick with the bite, which apparently he is because he dies. Now, however, if you defeat Auntie Ethel and do not let her get away in exchange for her hair, you can actually go back to Efren and he'll not only just lose the petrification on his own without the need of basilisk oil, but he'll also be magically cured of the sickness that was afflicting him. Talking with him reveals that it was Auntie Ethel that had both given him the sickness and petrified him as a supposed cure. And Efren isn't the only one that you can come back to and interact with. The mirror facing the skull of Callum, you will originally see a spirit trapped within, pounding on the glass from the inside, trying to escape. If you break the mirror, you'll actually see a spirit float away from it, and you'll also get Bane until Long Rest. That's a condition. After you defeat Ethel, the mirror will appear to be normal. No spirit trapped inside. Lauren, another of the hag's victims, will also have his ailment cured, and you can learn how he wanted to be able to be able to see the future. Now, not all the hag's victims were so lucky. You can see Magran, the decapitated elf, is of course too far gone and will remain holding her head. And interestingly, unlike many of the other hag victims who are cured once the hag is slain, for some reason Pendirna, who drank a potion Auntie Ethel gave her in the grove, does not 
not recover from her paralyzation if you kill the hag. And next up is the hidden treasure within the Western Beach. This area is one that most players probably didn't bother exploring as it's just a random dirt path that leads there. However, if you bypass all the traps and the fight between the guild and the Stone Lord's followers, you can actually find a bunch of valuable items. As you head towards the ship that was at Moonrise Towers, you can find a Mind Flayer tadpole specimen, and then on the ship's storage itself, you can find two more additional Mind Flayer tadpoles, leading to three total new Mind Flayer powers. Then there's a secret passageway resembling a cave, and at the end of it, there's a bunch of treasure, including the Bone Spike Boots. These are great for any class that doesn't wear armor, like a monk or a barbarian, and it grants plus one to AC and saving throws while not wearing armor, and it also grants Brutal Leap, which causes two turns of prone to the target, and the boots also increase your jump distance by five feet. Not bad at all. And next up is a secret magical token that is hidden within the Durinbald Mausoleum. Now, within the Graveyard of Act 3, you can find a coin called the Feather Token on a skeleton within the Durinbald Mausoleum. The description of this token appears to break the fourth wall, stating, if you fall while carrying this token, you take no falling damage. The token's magic is expended after you land, whereupon the disc becomes non-magical. Now, the mentioning on the coin literally saying falling damage is definitely one thing that makes this coin unique, but it also makes you wonder if it actually prevents falling damage. I tested it. It does not. So if it ever was magical, it's gone, or maybe that's the joke. It was never magical, and that's why a skeleton's holding it, because he thought it was. It then has another description that says, a small faded feather is stamped on one side of this surprisingly light coin. And even though the coin itself has no value to be sold to traders, it's certainly something that most players miss and is rather interesting. And next up are two unusual and unique hidden containers you can find in Act 3. Containers are great for keeping organized, and these two are especially good at this because of their unique appearance. The first is called Old Pouch and can be found on the roof of Jahira's house. Inside you can find a Harper pin, which can come in handy for opening up the basement of her house, and a note she wrote. You can also find some nice potions if you pass a perception check, and there's even a charming little egg you can find in a bird's nest. The egg's description is even more charming. The writer apparently had a cheerful day pondering the word egg. And then the second container can be found within a coffin inside of Kendall Hollow's tombstones, and while you might expect it to look like some type of animal in the tooltip, it appears to just be some bones. And that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.